Today on the bass channel, we're checking out a bunch of dark glass pedals, and we're not gonna play any metal. Before we get rolling, all the usual stuff, like, dislike, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and don't wear white on Labor Day. Or is it after Labor Day? Whatever, it doesn't matter. What does matter is Patreon's where the cool stuff's at. If you've been a fan of the base channel for any time now and you feel like what we do has value, please consider checking us out on Patreon. For a mere $5 or a venti Starbucks whatever the hell coffee, you get access to all sorts of extra base related content, including the extended clip of this particular video. Okay, now that that's out of the way, if you've been a fan of the base channel for any length of time, it's really no secret that I'm quite the fan of Dark Glass. They make a great line of products that sound awesome and they have a great team of people to back it all up. Big shout out to my friend Franco, Doug, Lauren, and Tommy over at Dark Glass. I promise this isn't a paid endorsement, I'm just doing this out of my own volition and uh, just wanted to clear up some misconceptions. Number one being, at least for us in the comments, one of the biggest criticisms that we get with our use of Dark Glass is that it only sounds good for metal. And I think that might be because we're guilty of this too. It's really easy to show off this tone. And no disrespect to that tone, it's a great tone. However, it's the one that you hear the most. So what I wanted to do is take a look at all four of the Dark Glass Ultra pedals to show you that there is a wide variety of tones available in each one. So with that being said, the tone that you heard at the top of the video featured the flagship B7K Ultra played by my good friend Jamie Lewis and a super rad master built Warwick Thumb 4. All right, next up is my friend Nick Maffei playing my 2015 Gibson SG bass. On this particular tone, I went maximum blend with a very conservative amount of drive. I left the bass where it was, rolled the treble off a little bit and really boosted some of the mids. I forget exactly which frequency, but you'll see it in the clip coming up in a minute for a really cool tone that definitely suits that particular bass. That's what I love about these pedals. They're so flexible. They often get labeled and thought of as just a distortion box that just does nothing but crazy raging metal. But these boxes, make no mistake, are full on preamps. So they're little amps in a box. Of course, it's got crazy amounts of drive on tap, but that doesn't mean you have to take it there all the time. As you saw, by putting the blend high and the drive low, you start to simulate some of that pushed, saturated tube amp territory. And again, having the four bands of EQ with two of those bands having a three-way selector switch, there is plenty of versatility on tap. A couple other handy switches on board are the grunt and attack switch. Now, I'm not a pedal engineer, but essentially I think these are coming before the drive stage, which is affecting the drive stage. So by adding more grunt or more attack, you're adding extra saturation to those particular frequencies. So you can boost it, you can leave it flat, or you can cut either of them, whichever combination you decide. So in this particular example, we're really boosting some mids here cutting the bass, boosting some 250. I forget the high mid frequency. Uh, we're leaving some clean and putting a little bit more drive, but those grunt and attack switches are not set to the extreme setting. So this next tone is my friend Johnny Flores playing my Epiphone Vintage Pro Thunderbird for a more vintagey blues type of sound.
Now, as you heard in that clip, we're definitely getting into the overdriven territory, but it's not metal. It's It's got that kind of tube amp sort of characteristic. Again, I know it's not 100% identical. Nothing is going to supplement running into a vintage Ampeg and cranking the gain. I totally get it. The whole point is to show that the, these pedals do more than just that nolly sound. Okay, moving right along to the Vintage Ultra. Now, the controls on deck are identical to the B7K, the main difference being that this distortion character, again, the character of the distortion itself has more mid-range presence, namely in the five to 800 hertz range. Again, I haven't gotten a scope out to measure it, but just based on what I've seen, it's, it's kind of in that particular territory. So let's move over to my friend Jamie Lewis, this time playing, I think it's a bona fide Fender Jazz Bass, and as you'll see, uh, I've definitely been pretty gratuitous in the mid-range, but anyway, I think this is an interesting tone that you don't often hear in dark glass demos. And continuing on with the vintage theme, uh, now we've got a 1957 Custom Shop Fender Precision Bass, split coil pickup, flat wound strings, and we've set the EQ to be low in the bass but more prominent in the low mids, and rolling off just a little bit of treble in there, and again, we're doing the high blend low drive, so you're not really getting a whole lot of distortion, you're just getting the character of that particular circuit. Okay, and last tone for the Vintage Ultra, kind of had to do this one. Uh, again, if you've watched the channel for any length of time, this song has kind of become a little famous in our catalog of tones that we use. Will's other old band, Cuvo, the song is My Son. You know the bass line, you love it. If you don't know it, you're about to love it. But I had to put this one in because this is Will's favorite pedal. This is what got us into Dark Glass. His interest in wanting to get a Vintage Ultra at the wee infancy of the channel sparked the, well, what's this company all about? And we snowballed to right here today. So I had to put Will heavy in the Vintage Ultra category. So I hope you enjoy Cuvo, my son. <laughs>
along to the Alpha Omega Ultra. Now, I will admit, this one's probably the most intense of the four, and it's probably the most difficult to tame and get a clean, saturated tube amp sound like we've been getting before. There's quite a bit more gain on tap in this guy than the B7K and the Vintage. However, it is still possible to tame and get something that's not insanely distorted. And one of the biggest keys to that is the growl and bite switches. Now, much like the grunt and attack, I know it's a lot of names, it gets a little confusing, but they essentially kind of do the same thing. They're adding more low and high end saturation into the gain circuit. So by removing those from the circuit, you can start to tame it into something that's a little bit more not metal. Another thing that makes this particular pedal special is on one side you have alpha, and the other side you got omega. Alpha is kind of the closer to a you know amp vibe with the mid scoop and a little bit richer treble and bass. You flip it over to the other side to omega that is just absolutely gnarly and in your face, but it doesn't have to be. It's basically when we're dealing with it from a not very much gain standpoint, it's really kind of a mid characteristic thing. Sure, the Omega has the ability to go super fuzz and just gnarly crazy more gain than you would ever need. But once you dial that drive all the way down and you start to play with the mod switch, it really becomes kind of an EQ characteristic because there's not a whole lot happening in the gain since we're at minimum. So this first particular example features the mod all the way to the alpha side. And we're kind of leaning into the fact that this one's a little bit harder to tame. We're still not metal, but we're gonna do some slap because slap, in my opinion, if you could put a little bit of hair, a little bit of grit, a little bit of dirt, a little bit of whatever you wanna call it, it just gives it a really cool forward kind of sound. So here's Jamie Lewis again on a something or other not Fender jazz bass, mod all the way to alpha, drive all the way down, and blend at approximately 75%. We're leaving the graphic EQ flat for the moment so you can just get a vibe of the character, of the distortion, the drive, the preamp, just the vibe of the pedal. Keeping it with Jamie, keeping it with Slap, we're gonna roll the mod halfway to get kind of the best of both worlds. We're leaving the drive at minimum and we're giving a little bit more clean signal to mix in with that distorted sound. Again, it's technically it's distorting. I wouldn't call it gnarly by any means. Uh, we're also gonna play with some EQ. As you see, we're doing the typical V shape, the old school tried and true, everybody loves to hate it. Mid scoop, goodbye 500, hello lows and treble. Keeping it with the Stingray, this is Johnny Boy playing some oldies. Now, to kind of go opposite of what we did before, we're gonna give a little bit more presence in the low mids and the mids. Now, again, to help accentuate the mids, like I mentioned before, with the drive at minimum, the mod is almost like a tone shape. It's not really a distortion thing now because we're not distorting that much. So to help push the mids even further, I've rolled in favor of the Omega. I'm approximately 75% over to the Omega side. Now again, we've got a slight boost in the low mid, so let's check out an oldies example on a Stingray. And last, and certainly best, oops, I'm supposed to keep this unbiased, last is the Microtubes X Ultra. This one is by far the most different in its approach, design, and overall sound. Now, we have dedicated videos on both the Ultra and the X7, so if you wanna learn more about it, go check them out. But for here, 
I'll just give you the quick rundown. Essentially, it splits your signal into a low and a high. The low gets compressed, the high gets distorted, and you have two miniature crossover switches to determine at which frequency do either of those things happen. So you've got low compression, low level, high level, high drive, and you can choose at which point either of those bands get affected by their respective knobs. And as we saw on the Alpha Omega, we have the exact same six band graphic EQ. Now I should have pointed this out earlier. All of these pedals have the opportunity to turn the distortion off and use only the EQ. But to prove the point that I'm trying to prove, I have intentionally left the distortion on at all times to show that the distortion can be usable at minimum or at least close to. So again, first up is Jamie Lewis playing the something or other not Fender Jazz Bass. very much like how I think of Will when I think of Vintage Ultra, when I think of Microtubes X, I think Nick. The reason for that being when we first got the X7, Nick had a reggae gig shortly after and having the ability to separate those two bands came in handy considering he didn't bring an amp. So he took the X7, went DI to the front of house, killed the high side, compressed and boosted the low, worked the EQ to his advantage. Now I don't know exactly what settings he was using but I've been able to get close get a close approximate recreation of the type of tone he had at that particular gig using footage and sound samples from that exact gig. At the time I shot the show I had Nick run into the wiretap so I got a clean, pure, unadulterated sound of just the bass and the pickups, re-ran it back through the X Ultra, set it to how I thought he had it at the time, and re-synced it up with the sound from the footage. So here is Nick's reggae gig from, I don't know, about a year or so ago. Hope you enjoy. Lastly, just to wrap it up, is Johnny Boy playing an extremely delicate piece on a Schecter Stiletto Custom 5. Now, again, we're gonna smash two preconceived notions. We have EMG and Dark Glass, Microtubes X Ultra no less, playing the most delicate harmonic melodic riff that you probably ever heard. EMG pickups, Schecter bass, Dark Glass pedal, distortion on. Check out how cool this sounds.
Now, if you've made it this far in the video and you've still decided that dark glass isn't for you, that's fine. I'm not here to convince you one way or the other. There's plenty of products out there with different flavors that's gonna suit everybody differently and be the best for you. However, you can no longer say that they're one dimensional and only for metal. So hey, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments which one you liked best. If you're a bitter curmudgeon who can't stand even a sliver of distortion on bass, give the video a thumbs down because your negative energy still helps the video more than you'd ever know. So with that being said, I'm Chris from the Bass Channel. That's the subscribe button. Patreon is the place that you're gonna wanna go for the cool secret exclusive extended insert buzzword here content. Be safe and I'll see you next week.